Thanks, Laura. And um, thank you. Um, just yes, I'm Maria de Corrigan. My pronouns are she, her, and and this is a project that was led by myself and Dr. Barry Quinn um, from the School of Nursing and Midwifery. Next, please. So, um, as we've already heard this morning, uh, trans people's experiences of healthcare tend to be negative because of discrimination and also because healthcare staff are not adequately trained in how to treat people who are trans. So, this project aims to develop training for undergraduate medical and nursing students and staff at Queen's. Next. So the training was co-produced in a workshop with undergraduate medical and nursing students and transgender and non-binary individuals from a transgender charity. So we can see their co-production is a process of shared decision making between providers of healthcare services and its users who face barriers in accessing healthcare. So it's an approach to do with and not to service users. Next, please. So these are the needs that were identified by the students um, in the workshop. They included using appropriate language and terminology, improving their knowledge and confidence around the specific healthcare needs of trans and non-binary patients, referral pathways and support groups, health inequities experienced by trans and non-binary people and relevant legislation. Next, please. Transgender NI, they were the local organization who were recruited then to deliver the training and they incorporated these identified needs into their training program. So three bespoke 90 minute training sessions were delivered online in October 2020, one for staff, one for students and a catch up for both staff and students who couldn't attend the student staff only sessions. So I suppose with COVID, um, you know, online and um, provided an opportunity for us to extend this training to um, a much wider audience than we would normally be able to. Next, please. So this is the content of the training. I know there's a lot of kind of co um, content in there. So it was very comprehensive and you can see how it maps to the needs identified in the workshop. So, you know, the importance of pronouns, taking a person-centered approach, um, health inequities like mental health, suicide, um, addressing prejudice and bias, um, and you know, some clinical scenarios and cases were discussed um, and information on pathways and local support. Next, please. So approximately 250 people registered to attend um, and 84 people provided feedback and overall the feedback was very positive. Um, for example, someone said it really opened my eyes to the discrimination trans people are affected by in terms of not being offered screenings relevant to them and how many of the services they need are dismissed and seen only as a gender identity problem. Um, one of the recommendations was that the training should be mandatory and also should last longer as a half day workshop. Okay. Um, Thank you. So um, also then they found the information about language very useful, as you can see. However, they would have liked this to have been expanded and um, to include what should what should not be said to avoid causing offence. And they would have liked to have heard more personal experiences. Next, please. I think that's time as well. Very sorry. Yes. <laughs> it's all right. Um, <laughs> oh, it's so hard. I know. You're, you're fine, Valerie. I was, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mairead. It sounds like really interesting work that you've been doing um, and I'm really impressed by the number of people you got to attend. Can I ask, was it um, something that was offered to students or was it something that was put across to all students in a particular year group in terms of the audience? It was offered to all students, years one to five in, in medicine and in the School of Nursing and Midwifery. And it also actually included postgraduate students as well as undergraduates and staff. Um, and, and we also had um, asked staff what they would have liked to have included, you know, in the training as well. And, and some issues were brought about kind of like research and about including trans people in research, um, you know, from the academic staff. So it was very kind of broad in terms of the training, which was difficult, you know, to develop. And that's why we had different sessions for different groups of, of people. Um, but it, it was a great start. And I was just my last slide there. I was really just going to say that the next step is to integrate this training into the undergraduate curriculum. Mm started to do with year two we have a tutorial now um, on lgbtq plus um you know and um, health inequalities and and um, communication issues and yeah 
Lovely. And yeah, that's just what we'd be thinking. It's putting it into the curriculum and finding space, isn't it? So mm. fantastic. And I think uh, Will has said, as well has Sage, that it would be great to hear more. Um, so I think, again, the DEMA website will be a great place to go to, I think, to, to, to continue the conversation and hopefully share some of the resources that we've all discussed today. Oh, 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 oh,